Okay, we got a wedge problem here. We want to find the smallest force necessary to lift this guy uh, up, this 200 kilogram um, crate up. Uh, friction is 0.3, coefficient of static for US is 0.3 for everything. So the way we deal with wedges is basically these are machines and we're transforming a force, basically from a horizontal force to a vertical force. So we do it the same way, break it into pieces, just like we would any machine problem, okay? So we've got this guy, we've got uh, four straight down, that's 200 times 9.8, that's the weight of this guy, okay? And then I've got a normal force, which I will call NAB, okay? Uh, and then I've got a friction force there. Now, a lot of times it's easier to look at this when it's regard to the wedge, right? If I've got P this way, I hope it's obvious that the friction forces are opposing that motion like this. So that friction force here on the top would be FAB, okay? Which would be to the left here, okay? NAB would be straight down, okay? So if it's to the left on that one, Newton's third law says it's got to be to the right on this one. And that friction force is to the right, thus pushing it into the wall right here. I'll call this the normal force of A, okay? And then that motion will be moving upward, so I'll have a friction force straight downward of FA, okay? Finishing off the wedge, I have the friction force of wedge B, uh, and then I'll have a normal force NB, like so. So those are my free body diagrams. Got a whole bunch of unknowns there. Let's go ahead and start applying equations. Now, there's no tipping uh, in this problem at all, okay? There's only sliding. That's kind of how wedges work. They slide. They don't do any tipping or anything. So uh, we'll sum the forces in the x direction. We'll start with the, the top equation. Or I'm sorry, the top free body diagram. And I'll have uh, FAB and then minus the wall normal force and A and set that equal to zero. Some of the forces in the Y direction, I'll have NAB up and I have the friction on the wall down, which would be minus FA. And then I've got the uh, weight of this thing, which is 1960. That's 200 times 9.8. Again, I got to get it into Newtons from the kilogram. So it's all in a force. So those are my two equations on the top one. Now let's go to the bottom, to the wedge. The wedge does not have a mass, so I don't need to worry about a mass on this one. It is much smaller. We neglect the mass on wedges usually. So I've got P going to the right. I've got FAB going to the left. Okay. I also have friction B going to the left, but add a cosine of 15. So minus FB cosine 15. And it'll have a uh, normal force associated with it, which would be sine of 15. It is also just slightly to the left, right? It's up and to the left. So uh, that's why we have a negative sign on that one and set that one equal to zero. Some of my forces in the Y direction. Uh, in the Y direction, I've got NAB pushing straight down. Again, I don't worry about uh, gravity here. Don't worry about the mass. It's so much smaller than the 200 kilograms that we neglected. Okay, so I just have my friction force, which is ever so slightly down, FB sine of 15, okay? Uh, and then I've got my normal force up, and B cosine of 15 equals zero. So those are my four equations. Now you'll see I have a lot more than four unknowns. I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, I forgot, seven. So I've got seven unknowns, four equations, okay? But again, we go back to what we know. Okay, this thing is gonna slide. If if things things gonna start moving, we're gonna have slipping everywhere, okay? Therefore, the friction force everywhere has to equal mu s n, right? They're all at their limiting position. That's the least amount of force to get those things to start moving. So this one is 0.3. 9A, uh, NA, FAB is also 0.3 times its normal force, and then FB is as well. That gives me three more equations, okay? Uh, those three equations give me seven totals, and now I can solve this. Now, I didn't say it would be easy, okay? 
but I will let you uh, work through it on your own. Uh, I believe the order, the easiest way to do these is I'll solve for NAB. I get 2154. I'll let you do these on your own, but now you can check them. It's just algebra. Tedious algebra, but just algebra nonetheless. And B is 2425. Two, and I think from that, I can finally find P, which would be 1976 Newtons. Okay. Now, you might be saying to yourself, hey, I thought machines were supposed to make life easier. Remember what we're doing here. We're turning a 90 degree angle on this force. It's a lot easier to hit with, you know, like a sledgehammer or something with 2,000 Newtons to raise this about 2,000 Newton crate. But then after you do it, it sticks in place, right? So it's not about getting a mechanical advantage as much as it is being able to turn the corner and then have it stay in place with the friction that we've got applied to it. But we treat this the same way we treat any other machine where we break it up into pieces and treat them all, get equations from all of them. Again, then applying that, okay, to overcome friction, all of the frictions are at their maximum, which is mu s times m.